the German for Christmas stocking? What? What do you mean there's no German tradition of stuffing an oversized sock with miniature presents and a tangerine? OK, so there are some things the Germans are missing out on at Christmas, but they've got enough of their own traditional elements to set the festive season apart. The details vary from region to region and family to family, but here's a Meet the Germans rundown of 10 vital ingredients for a very German Christmas. Around four weeks before Christmas, little clusters of wooden huts adorned with twinkling lights spring up on market squares across Germany. These Christmas markets are renowned the world over. There's food, drink, a peculiar abundance of sugared nuts, and Christmas gifts galore. That brings us swiftly to point number two, Glühwein. The weather might be cold and your car won't start, but in December, you can drink hot wine to your heart's content. For an extra kick, get a Glühwein mit Schuss. That's with a shot of rum or amaretto. In Germany, half the fun of Christmas is the anticipation, so they really make the most of Advent traditions. There's the Advent wreath, for example, that's got a candle to be lit on every one of the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. The Advent calendar game is also really strong here. It's very popular to make a homemade, personalised Advent calendar for your partner or your child. I'm talking perfect Pinterest fodder. Another wholesome Christmas activity is baking Christmas cookies, or Plätzchen. There's a lot of vanilla, cinnamon and jam involved, and the different variations have funky names like Spitzbuber, which means rascal, and Engelsaugen, angel eyes. If a German invites you over for Christmas and you turn up on the 25th of December, you're sadly a day too late. The 24th is known as Heiliger Abend, or Holy Evening, and that's when the gifts are traditionally exchanged. Old Saint Nick does the rounds on the 6th of December, leaving chocolates and nuts in children's shoes. At Christmas, the presents are left under the tree, either by the Weihnachtsmann, literally Christmas man, or the Christkind, a blonde angel-like figure. The Christkind must be way more stealthy than Santa, because the presents magically appear in the middle of the day. The gift-bearing St. Nicholas, who comes on the 6th of December, also has some more mean-spirited mates. Depending on where they live in Germany, children might be threatened with a visit from Knecht Ruprecht, or from Krampus, a half-goat, half-demon, who brings children coal and twigs. He might even kidnap them, because nothing says Christmas spirit like striking fear into the hearts of naughty children, right? The exact food eaten on Christmas varies between families, but a popular choice for the 24th is potato salad and sausage, two food items the Germans will apparently try and crowbar into any occasion. Ah, the Tannenbaum. Of course we have Germany to thank for the modern Christmas tree. In southern Germany, there's even a tradition called Christbaumloben. This basically entails knocking on your neighbour's door, praising their Christmas tree, knocking back a schnapps, and then moving on to the next house to repeat the process. In Germany, you might notice a mysterious code chalked above doorways. The C, M and B stand for Kaspar, Melchior and Balthasar, otherwise known as the Three Wise Men. The numbers at the beginning and end combine to make the year. On January the 6th, which is Epiphany or Three Kings Day, lots of German kids dressed as kings will go around their neighbourhood singing songs and collecting sweets and charity funds. These chalky symbols are left behind, and that brings the festive season to a close for another year. Frohe Weihnachten, see you next year.